and I belong to Hope Church in at Bromley Common. At the time this passage for today's word was being prepared, the news came through that Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, had slipped away to be with Jesus in heaven. In Genesis 49, we read Jacob's last will and testament regarding his funeral and burial. No matter what preparations are in place, and no matter how prepared we might be in similar circumstances, the shock of the finality of the earthly departure of a loved one is still overwhelming in those first moments, days and months for those who watch and wait for the final goodbye on earth to happen, as it was for Queen Elizabeth and her family, and so it was with Joseph and his family. From the time that Joseph was brought down to Egypt, it was recognised that the Lord was with him, even though he was a slave. The Lord was with him and made whatever he did to prosper. Pharaoh knew that the Spirit of God was in Joseph and not only trusted and favoured him, but promoted him to second in command. Joseph's faith in God, his servant heart and his faithful service in saving the nation from the utter destruction from the famine, led to the deep respect and regard of him and his father Jacob from Pharaoh and all the people of Egypt, who mourned the passing of Jacob as they would royalty. Indeed, when Jacob was first presented to Pharaoh, Jacob prayed for him and blessed him. Joseph trusted and honoured Joseph and recognised his and his family's need to honour their father and Jacob's demand for his final resting place to be with Abraham and Isaac in the land of Canaan. However, after the family returned to Egypt, Joseph's brothers had a severe attack of guilty conscience regarding their former treatment of their brother and became fearful of what Joseph may do to them. So they concocted together a story and sent a messenger with it to Joseph, having completely forgotten, ignoring or simply just not believing Joseph's forgiveness of them in Genesis 45. No wonder Joseph wept. How devastating for Joseph, first of all on a personal level, that his family could even think that he would turn against them in such a way after so many years of being with him in Egypt, and secondly, that they had absolutely no understanding of God's divine plan and purpose for the survival of his chosen people Israel. Joseph understood to the core of his being that if, it, if he had not been in Egypt, he could never have prepared for the famine. In Genesis 47 verse 25, the Egyptians themselves recognised that Joseph had saved their lives. It was the core belief and trust in God in Joseph's heart and his understanding of his father Jacob's need to remind Joseph of God's covenant to his people through circumcision in verse 29 of the same chapter. How sad that his brothers had no concept of the times they were living in. Such was Joseph's love and compassion for his family that he could say to his brothers, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are this day. Now therefore do not be afraid. I will provide for and support you and your little ones. And he comforted them, imparting cheer, hope, strength and spoke to their hearts kindly. 
Heavenly Father, thank you that you determine our future. Thank you for your promise to the enslaved Israelites when you said, For I know the plans I have for you. They are plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope.